As part of the requirement for the Emergent IT Product Developments module, this presentation aims to identify an interesting problem in which data can be analysed in order to gain valuable insights. Open data from data.london.gov.uk on both hourly earnings and assault data to demonstrate how users could use linked data to generate their own risk analysis, in this instance to determine whether or not a relocation is feasible for the sake of higher pay, if there was an increase in likelihood of assault. The purpose of this presentation is to demonstrate the potential benefits of linked data by showing how a user could create a specific query and obtain a comprehensive insight. The example identifies an interesting problem or whether or not there is a correlation between assault rates and average salaries within specific boroughs of London using open data from data.london.gov.uk. Stephen Matchin and Costas McGurr concluded in their 2004 study, Crime and Economic Incentives, that crime rates should be higher when and where wages at the bottom end of the wage distribution are lower, reflecting poorer market opportunities where the probability of being caught is lower, where crime rates are already higher, and where crime and the potential returns to crime are high. However, Mike Riggs talks of how researchers have studied the relationship of crime and earnings for decades, claiming there's simply nothing to it. Although the correlation of crime and earnings was first explored by Robert Merton, he argued in 1938's Social Structure and Anomaly that certain types of crime resulted from the ability to achieve culturally defined goals, namely acquisition of material goods, by socially acceptable means that is. But Riggs goes on to explain that recent studies from 1994 onwards, minimum wage rose whilst crime went down, in 18 of the United States of America at least. Such contradicting studies are likely a concern for those who wish to relocate for potential higher earnings, but linked data would eradicate this issue, as it would allow users to base their decisions on official government records and big data, in turn generating an accurate personal risk analysis enabling them to identify trends and make informed decisions. Josiah Stamp explained that the government is extremely fond of amassing great quantities of statistics. These are raised to the nth degree, the cube roots are extracted, and the results are arranged into elaborate and impressive displays. What must be kept ever in mind, however, is that in every case, the figures are first put down by a village watchman, and he puts down anything he damn well pleases. For example, the figures on an x-axis of a line graph can be spaced further apart to depict a more exaggerated increase or decrease in trends. This goes to show that statistics can be manipulated in order to change one's perspective, which links in with Edward Tuft's notion that there are right ways and wrong ways to display data. There are displays that reveal the truth and displays that don't. Just another reason why creating your own risk analysis is going to be far more trustworthy. So the application must also present data clearly and effectively. As Tuft explains, there are of course right and wrong ways to display the data. The application must adhere to CIA or confidentiality, integrity and availability principles meaning it must be password protected, accessible on multiple systems, such as in an office and or work environment and a home location. The application must also adhere to data for humanity principles, i.e. data should be used for good purposes. Data for humanity principles will be covered in depth within this presentation. And finally, the application must allow for data to be linked, whether there's a direct connection or the ability to analyze more than one data set concurrently. So the goal for presenting the data is clarity. As a result of this, the application must not generate dashboards that are distracting in nature, use flat design as opposed to 3D effects, use colour effectively as 4.5% of the population is affected by colour blindness, according to colourblindness.org, and there is often confusion between red, green and yellow. Using hue or saturation levels is an easy fix for this instead, and blind people will easily be able to dis differentiate between colours as well. As you can see from the chart below, Watson Analytics follows all of these principles closely, such as using a flat or 2D design as opposed to a 3D design, and hue manipulation as opposed to different colours by default. Please note that the pie chart is not how the data will finally present it, as there is just simply far too much data to analyse essentially. 
but it is a good example of how Watson Analytics does understand these basic design principles and uses hue as opposed to solid colours. In terms of deciding which analytical tool to use, Watson Analytics was clearly a better choice for the subject area. For example, the ease of use first and foremost for the average everyday user. You know, there's no expected coding uh, knowledge or anything like that. It's also cloud-based, so it does tick the box when it comes to being accessible in terms of the CIA triad and principles. So you can accept, you can access it from your home, office, wherever. And like I said, there's no prior coded knowledge required making it very easy to use, but as well as that, there's many visualization choices, so you can make sure you're viewing the data best for your needs. And of course, there's also the mapping or location visualization, which is crucial for the nature of our data, seeing as though it's heavily mapped. IBM Bluemix, on the contrary, what, as a, it is cloud-based and it can link different applications for various uses. However, other tools within Bluemix are essentially redundant for the purpose of study. There's a lot of tools there that we don't need for this purpose, such as Twitter linking, etc. and Node-RED. There's no option for location visualization, and you do need a little bit of code and knowledge to do it, so it's not for the average everyday user. Whereas the only real disadvantages of IBM Watson Analytics is that it's not as powerful as SAS. The free version does have limitations on uploads, but that can be circumvented through the premium version or just using set pieces of data at a time. And it does depend on the quality of an internet connection as opposed to being able to use locally. SAS, again, industry standard. It is designed to handle large amounts of big data. It's a powerful industry style analytical tool. However, when you compare it to Watson Analytics for the purpose of this study, again, there's no option for location visualization, lots of coding knowledge necessary with it being a syntax-based program. And again, there's no default cloud storage. You can add it on, but it is an expensive investment. And lastly, Microsoft Excel, the most obvious advantage being that it's the most common, easily accessible analytics tool in the right hands. That's uh, a case of whether or not you can use Excel effectively. It's good at reporting and graphic capabilities, but it draws the line at good. So, moving on, there's no option for location visualization. The requirements are just uh, far too advanced for Excel, unfortunately, and it's not as powerful as a dedicated analytics tool for big data, meaning that IBM Watson Analytics is going to be by far the best just because it's ease of use, accessibility from anywhere, and you don't need any knowledge of coding whatsoever. The datasets were first found on data.london.gov.uk. It was then cleansed, or this process is described in depth in the development section of this pro of the presentation, and then imported into Watson Analytics. Different views were trialled until decided on the best visual representations. As you can see here, from downloading the datasets from the london.gov website, it's a case of logging on to IBM Watson Analytics, clicking on the add button and then simply dropping a file or browsing through your computer to find the file and then importing it. Here's a few examples of some views or as Watson Analytics calls it, explorations. Here's a standard line graph comparing all areas of London in terms of pay per hour. So as you can see there's a lot of data up front there for every year just displayed as a standard line graph. You can then click on that and view individual results. Here is an example of the mapping and location capabilities Watson Analytics has. As you can see, the actual colours come up for a certain amount of crime. So the darker, the more crime rates, the lighter, the less crime rates. You can click on that individually and then get a glimpse of just how many crimes occurred in one single month or an entire year. And lastly is the bar chart. Again, standard bar chart is just an example of how you can convert that into an actual map for a quick at a glance idea of where the crime rates are. So on the Springer website you can find the study by Jonathan Maletic and Andrew Marcus. When it comes to data quality, the source of data is the most crucial factor, which is why using data from an official governance source was imperative to the explorations within Watson Analytics. Data quality measures the degree to which the data is suitable for a predictive analysis. This is especially useful if the user wishes to anticipate future figures and identify some trends using the earnings slash crimes in London as an example. Cleansing the data consisted of simplifying the source of data, i.e. the Excel file in this example. 
by removing unnecessary data such as codes, etc. As you can see here, this is the original Excel spreadsheet downloaded from the data.london.gov website. And this is the data that was partially cleansed. You can see codes have been removed, confidence percentages which are unnecessary for this purpose of study have also been removed, which has resulted in higher data quality according to data, uh, Watson Analytics. So the data cleansing process results in a data set more suitable for making predictions, which is another strength for Watson Analytics. Although other analytical tools can make predictions, only Watson Analytics can give a user an indication of how accurate the predictions will be as a result of uploading quality files. Before and after cleansing, one data set will now generate more reliable predictions. As you can see, there's a high quality one on the left of 82% quality and 59% which is considered medium quality. Either can be used for any kind of exploration and either can be used for predictions, but the predictions will of course, according to Watson Analytics, be more accurate for the file on the left that has been thoroughly cleansed. So Watson Analytics can be temperamental with data quality, meaning sometimes no matter what you extract and cleanse from a data set, the user won't achieve a data quality score beyond 70%. The free version also restricts the amount of rows allowed. This resulted in being restricted in terms of time frame. The original data sets had figures dating back many years, which unfortunately couldn't be used up until the university made the investment to give us all accounts for the full version. This was rectified, however, with an investment in the premium version, of course. Only data from the early 2000s couldn't be used until an investment was made in order to access hundreds of rows which temporarily restricted insights, but of course the investment resolved the issue in the end and worked out far cheaper than an investment in a program such as SAS Analytics. So here's an example of analytical insights for the borough of Newham. We're checking crime rates compared to rate of pay. As we can see the crime rates are here and we can see Newham's quite dark in terms of the hue and saturation which implies the crime rates are closer to the 200s per the single month of January 2011. And you can see the rate of pay here. It has since gone up to about £12.61 in recent years, but for 2011, the figure stayed largely the same. So the user can essentially say, is it worth me moving to Newham where the crime rates are quite high, where my wage on average will be this per hour? Again, Newham earnings for 2011. Here we can see an example of a more recent date, November 2014 for example, in an area with less crime. So Richmond upon the Thames, here's an example of what happens when you click on the area. It shows you an exact figure of crimes for that one month in terms of assault. We can see here it's 19. Now I've selected Newham and Richmond upon the Thames here to show that you can concurrently compare the two areas in terms of pay within a line graph that better displays trends. So for the sake of comparative analysis, this is really crucial and is essentially unrivaled by any other analytical program I've found. Lastly, I'll cover the data for humanity principles. The data for humanity principles are 1. Do not harm 2. Use data to help create peaceful coexistence 3. Use data to help vulnerable people and people in need 4. Use data to preserve and improve natural environment 5. Use data to create help in a fair world without discrimination. In other words, data should serve us as a humanity and should be used for the right reasons. By creating a system in which a user utilizes Watson Analytics and data provided by the government, the principles will no doubt be adhered to as a result of the information being provided by the Freedom of Information Act, so the data is mined ethically. And of course, Watson Analytics, as previously proven, adheres to all CIA principles. Lastly, from the london.gov.uk website, as proof of the data being harvested ethically, raw data often doesn't tell you anything until it's been presented in a meaningful way, and most people don't have the tools to do this. That's why we're keen for you to visualise our build apps from the data available on the site, and we're happy to promote these, showing that the actual london.gov.uk website encourages users to analyse this data themselves, as opposed to presenting in it in a way that they think is beneficial.